God bless you and welcome to Word Alive this morning. I am Pastor Ray Romero and I'm over here with our prayer partners and we are just excited to be able to be in agreement with you today and to believe God with you. I know and, and understand that we're going through situations, problems, turmoil, all type of different circumstances in our lives. But I'm here to tell you, that's why we're here. We're here to be in agreement with you. We're here to believe that God can change your situation and he can turn it around. And this morning, our prayer partners are standing by. That number on your screen, we want you to begin to call it right now. If you know somebody that's going through something, I invite you to call them to call in today. We are believing God for the power of God to touch your life and your situation right now. Nothing is too hard. Nothing is impossible for our God. So we encourage you, call in today so we can be in agreement with you. I want to open up this morning with a word of prayer, and then we're going to go to a song, and then we'll be right back with you. But if you're there and you're watching, I want you to just be in agreement with us. Father, we thank you. We bless you and we praise you. Today is a great day. Today is a wonderful day. And Father, we thank you that you're going to do great and mighty things today. We praise you for it and we thank you. Bless our audience out there. Lord, may you touch their situation. May you touch their lives, Lord God. Whatever they're going through, whatever problems they're having right now, may you minister to them, Father. And I thank you for these prayer partners, Lord God, that are here. They're standing by. Lord God, the anointing of God, the presence of God is all over them, ready to minister to your people. We love you and we thank you, Father, and we bless you. And Lord, every plot of the enemy and every scheme of the enemy, I break it today in the name of Jesus Christ. And I just declare right now, there's freedom and liberty in your people. And we give you praise today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We bless you today. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. And we're going to go to a song right now, and we will be right back with you. God bless you. We're expecting great and mighty things. I want you to know that this is the time, this is the season. Jehovah, you are Jehovah, and I glorify you, and I glorify you. 
into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And then you come to lift up the name of Jesus. lifetime, you remember the things that sometimes you may have felt like they did not make a great difference. And then you realize the legacy you have created is more than you ever imagined. However you want your legacy remembered, we can help. You'll be remembered and honored at Louisville's newest Memorial Park, Crosswater Garden Cemetery and Memorial Park, helping people just like you display their legacy for generations to come. Evangel Christian School continues to expand its reach and academic excellence in the fall of 2013 as we welcome the new elementary school administrator, Margaret Rogers. Mrs. Rogers brings her years of proven excellence in early childhood education to an already proven teaching staff with years combined educational experience. Call today for information on how you can apply for financial aid and for information about the school. Evangel Christian School, offering the very best in academic and spiritual education, grades K through 12. Call today, 502-968-7744 or visit evangelchristianschool.com. Hello, this is Perry Stone, and I am so happy to announce that we're coming back to the Evangel World Fair Center on Billtown Road for another great Hebraic Prophetic Conference. Folks, don't miss this. We have some revelation from God, breakthrough truth, that we want to share with you and get in your spirit. I'll see you there. Well, welcome back to Word Alive. I'm Pastor Ray Romero, and I'm your host today. 
And we're so excited to be with you today. We're believing God for great things in your life uh, today. Today is the day the Lord has made. And we're believing that God is going to do something spectacular for you. We want to continue to encourage you. The number's on the screen. Call our prayer partner so that we can believe God with you. They can believe God with you. Later on in the broadcast, we're going to be taking live calls here. And it's going to be an honor and a privilege for us to take your personal calls and pray with you and believe God with you. I want to share something out of the Word of God this morning. And it's found in John chapter 2. And it says, And the third day there was a marriage in Canaan of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. I want to hold up right there for a minute. Today, we want to talk about marriages. We want to talk about healthy marriages. We want to talk about strong marriages. We want to encourage you that's going through any type of problems or situations in your marriage today. Um... Today, I'm so honored and privileged to have with me uh, my wife, DeLillian Romero. She pastors with me at the Evangel World Prayer Center in Elizabethtown. We have been married 21 years. Yesterday, we celebrated our 21st anniversary. Glory to God. Glory to God. And we have had some rough times. We've had some good times. We've had some great times. And we, we had some tough times as well. But I'm here to tell you, glory to God, everything that we've been through and everything that has went on, it is well worth it. We celebrate 21 years today. I mean, yesterday. And so, glory to God. So, we know that marriage is tough. We know that marriage is work. We know that marriage is something that you're going to have to hang on in there and you're going to fight for. So, today, we want to talk about marriages. We want to talk about healthy marriages. We want to talk about strong marriages. And we want to talk about how the devil comes in and tries to destroy marriages, uh, especially he's trying to destroy Christian marriages. And we understand that uh, the divorce rate in the church or in the body of Christ is just as high as the divorce rate in the world. And, um, and so we want to minister to you today. And maybe you have someone or loved one, a family member, they're going through something right now. Well, glory to God. I want you to get them on the phone. Have them tune into this broadcast because I believe that God is going to do something great for you today. Amen. And I want to introduce today my wife, Delillian Romero. Thank you. It's good to be here today. I just, um, glory to God, we've been married, as he's already said, 21 years. It's been up and down. But I'm telling you, once you get through the rough part of being married and you realize as a woman, what I found out is that it, that Ray is not my source, that God is my source. And when I take the pressure off of my husband, then I realize that, you know what, I can do all things through Christ me because he enables me to be in a whole and healthy marriage. Is it rough? Yes. But the rewards are so much greater, and I praise God for that. Glory Amen. To God. Baby, I want you to talk just a little bit about and, and we've been doing some counseling with, with different couples. And, and we tend to find out that uh, love is not a factor. We know in the body of Christ we are to love. And love is, is, is something that we do. And we find out that there are a lot of couples, they love each other, but then there's times in the marriage when they just don't like each other. <laughs> Amen. I mean, we're just going to be real today, okay? There's things that we don't like. Mm -hmm. You know, we come into a marriage and we think it's going to be this way. And after the first couple of years, we find out that, hold on, that person that I married, that's not the same person that, 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 that I knew or I thought they were going to be. And after a couple of years, we begin to find out more things about them and, uh, and things that we just don't like. And so, baby, talk, talk to us a little bit about um, things that, that how couples love each other, but how do they get through those things that they don't like about each other? I say we prayed a lot. We prayed a lot when it came to uh, just being open. There are things that Ray likes to do. There are things that I like to do. But with that, you have to work 
on doing things together. Uh, we found a lot of times that we have to make time for each other. Our children grew up knowing that once a week we had a date night and it didn't matter what was going on. We left them at home once we got a babysitter. Now they're older and they watch themselves, but I'm telling you, God honored that time. The children respected us. It didn't matter what we did. We just made time for each other because the goal is for the four children to leave home. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. And then for us to continue on and enjoy our lives together because we're the ones that shall never depart. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. For death do you part. Right. So that's where we are. So I'd like to encourage married couples, don't give up. Do not give up. Find time, make time to go out, to hang out, to date each other. Not just the regular um, go out to dinner and that's it. Get dressed up. Mm -hmm. Go out just like you did before you got married and continue to do fun and, and just spontaneous things. Mm -hmm. It really adds to the marriage and it helps you like each other because most times, as pastors already said, we love each other, but it's like, okay, so what do we do with that love? And anybody that hangs out with us, they know we have a good time together, whether it's sitting somewhere laughing about something or telling jokes, but we have to purposely do that to maintain a healthy marriage so that the stress of four children, ministry work, your other jobs, whatever is going on, does not take that joy from you. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the big, big thing. Amen. Have Amen. fun. Have fun. Glory to God. And you know, and, and uh, Pastor DeLillian said something about uh, till death uh, do us part. Amen. <laughs> Sometimes we just wait now to live the other one. <laughs> Okay, and, and it shouldn't be that way. It exactly. should be like we should live to be together as long as we possibly can. Not to wake up one day and say, ha, ah, I outlived you. No, <laughs> that's not the way it should be. We're talking about this morning about marriages. And here in John chapter 2, it says in, in verse 2, And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. That is real key in a marriage. Jesus has to be part of the marriage. All right Jesus now. has to be the focus. He has to be the center of the marriage. He has to be there whenever we're going through whatever we're going through, problems. And, and believe me, you're going to have some problems. You're going to have some trials. You're going to have some tribulations. You're going to have some situations in your life. But if we, as long as we know that Jesus is there with us in the marriage, glory to God, I think that we're going to have great success in our marriage. Amen? I want to encourage you. Continue to call those yes. prayer requests. I know that we're talking. I know we're going to be saying some things, and I know that you're going to be wanting to listen to what we're saying. But here, we need you to call in so we can be in agreement with you. Now, I'm yes. speaking to some people out here, and I know that right now you're going through some tough times in your marriage, and possibly even on the verge of a divorce. As a right. matter of fact, last week we took a call from a lady that says, hey, her husband was going to file for divorce and she didn't know what to do. Now, I'm going to tell you here on this broadcast, we're not going to encourage divorce. We're not going to say go out and get a divorce. We're not going to be in agreement with that because we know that God can fix everything. He's a God can turn the yes. hearts of men around. He can change the whole situation. We know that he can do that. And uh, so we're not going to encourage that. What we're going to do is we're going to encourage you to believe God to make your marriage better. And you might say, well, hey, you know what, Pastor? I have a good marriage. Well, let's believe God to make it a better marriage, exactly. a great marriage. Amen. So, baby, tell us about uh, having Jesus in our marriage and how that affects us and how important that is to us uh, because we're going to go through hard times. Exactly. You know, I really got the revelation of to err is human and to forgive is divine because forgiveness is not something we do in ourselves. It's something totally from the Lord that he puts in us to be able to forgive people. And in our marriage, yes, there are times that you have to forgive one another. There are times you have to forgive yourself for doing or saying things that are not in line with the word of God. But we have that divine connection 
to be able to forgive. And I think forgiveness is one of the key factors to having a healthy marriage, that you know that you've got to forgive. And one of the things I know that I always kept in mind is that you've never, in our marriage, our 21 years, did anything that I can't forgive you of because I've done things that God has always forgiven me for if I ask for forgiveness. So the key is to ask for forgiveness and to move on and that God will work in any situation. I think um, sometimes it's hard. It, and I, it is it's sometimes marriage is hard. You go to, through times when the children are small and there's stress or work, but you always have to keep the Lord in the marriage because it was ordained by God. Mm -hmm. And the only way to do marriage good is with God. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm telling you, we've met a lot of married couples that um, actually got married at one church together at the same time and then they end up going to church different times and different days and different uh, services and I think that's kind of hard because when you hear the word to God, of God together mm -hmm. it helps you to be on one accord so I say the Lord is the only way to build the house of a marriage, a good marriage, a healthy marriage. So do you always want to call on God? Sometimes we've uh, <clears throat> feuded and one of us wants to stay mad, but then the other one has to lift the other one up in prayer and encouragement and just walk away, diffuse the situation, and then come back later and try to come up with the answer mm -hmm. to what you're disagreeing on. And will you always agree? No. And sometimes you just have to leave things alone and just ask God to work on the situation. Amen. So, well, glory to God. God. And, you know, uh, the thing about sometimes, most of the time, a lot of times, <clears throat> the forgiveness process is being able to come back and say, hey, look, I messed up. I'm sorry. Yes. I apologize. You know, please forgive me. Uh, because we both do that on both sides. You know, and then <clears throat> when we, we're going to go to a break here in a little bit. In a couple of minutes. But when we come back, we want to talk about outside influences in your marriage. Friends, families, children, uh, children uh, in-laws, how they come in and how they affect your marriage. Right. And, uh, and, and so we're going to go to a break here. But I want to encourage you, continue to call our prayer lines um, and call somebody on the phone. And let them know to tune into this broadcast because we have a word for them today. Amen. And we'll be right back with you. God bless you.
double time. I can sing when I win. I can sing when I lose my step. And I fall down again. I can sing because you pick me up. I can sing because you're there. I can sing because I know you hear me, Lord, when I call you in prayer. I can sing with my last breath. Harry Stone, and I am so happy to announce that we're coming back to the Evangel World Fair Center on Billtown Road for another great Hebraic Prophetic Conference. Folks, don't miss this. We have some revelation from God, breakthrough truth that we want to share with you and get in your spirit. I'll see you later. to Word Alive. I am Ray Romero and again I'm here with my wife Delillian and today we're talking about marriages. We're talking about healthy marriages, strong marriages, God uh, in the midst of our marriage and we're using the scripture out of John chapter 2 and verse 2 and it says and when they and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. We want to encourage you today Call Jesus into the midst of your marriage. Exactly. Call him, bring him into the midst of whatever you're going through. Because he is the answer and he can fix all your situations. Uh, today, uh, we're going to talk just for a few minutes about outside influences. And I understand that we can't cover everything in just this one broadcast. So we're just going to hit on a few things that might help you um, to develop a stronger and a better marriages and maybe there are some things that are coming out um, you know finance is always a big thing uh, when it comes to marriages uh, children uh, family members friends uh, in-laws when it comes to, to outside influences and how they influence your marriage I will say this <clears throat> that I've learned a long time ago that your spouse will always forgive you but in-laws or family or friends, it takes them a time to forgive for whatever happened or however you messed up. So, uh, Delillian, tell us today if just a couple of things or one thing uh, in particular that you would consider to be an outside influence that our listeners and, and our audience can take with them and help them. I think the main um, influence is ungodly counsel. Mm -hmm. If you have uh, people around you that are not giving you the word of God to help your marriage, it's not going to help you. you. You know, that's an influence that's taking you away from the healing process, the restoring process. It's taking you away from where God wants you, you in your marriage. So you have to have godly counsel, whether that's a friend, whether that's a uh, your in-laws, you can get godly counsel from in-laws, but make sure. I think that's the biggest influence. People take on influence or counsel from people that are really not in a position to give good counsel. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the main things I think couples need to be aware of, that, hey, 
everybody doesn't have a good word for me. Yeah. Everyone is not out for my best interest. So I need to look at that. Mm -hmm. And if the council does not line up with the word of God, uh, which encourages um, forgiveness and love and walking in patience and the fruit of the spirit, I say uh, let that council go because it's not of God. Mm -hmm. So it, it doesn't matter what the... Uh, the different outside influences are the influences should be of God or of godly counsel and if not then we have a problem right and and you know one of those things that I found that uh, sometimes people they draw to people that have been through a similar situation but had never been healed from it exactly and and so their counsel to you is based on where they are right now exactly and so they're going to be telling you, oh, well, you need to go on and leave him. You need to let him go. He's no good. Her. Uh, her. You know, however it works out. Uh, and so, you know, you're, you're exactly right when we're talking about uh, getting godly counsel, getting wise counsel. Correct. Getting counsel from somebody that has been through it and has worked through it, and now you see them successful in that area. Exactly. Uh, I, w I want to just say here. Uh, as we just pause for a minute, we want you to continue to call in. Yes. We want to believe God with you. If there's somebody and you want to uh, get transferred over here to us, as a matter of fact, we got a call right now uh, that we want to go to and we want to take this call. Uh, before you take the call, Ray, I do know that those that are calling in know that we can't answer all your problems on this broadcast but I do want to let you know that God has a way of escape out of any situation you're in and that he is able to heal and restore marriages one of the main things is both parties need to be willing mm -hmm. I think that's a big factor when there's a, a breach in the marriage of any sort both have to be willing and humble enough to say I messed up I'm sorry what can we do? And then you go to God. So let's take the call. Let's see. Amen. God bless you and welcome to Word Alive. Praise God. Praise the Lord. May, may we have your first name and uh, what your prayer request is? Uh, it's Tanya. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh-huh. Tanya. All right, Tanya. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you're talking about marriage. And uh, how about um, I'd like you to pray for me to have a... Uh, a good one, the best one, uh, when I get one. <laughs> okay, so you're 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 just in the process of believing for a husband. Yes. Yes. Amen. Uh, I believe he's coming. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I want uh, a good marriage when I do get married. Glory to God. That's what I want. Amen. Praise God. Well, praise God. Well, uh, Lillian, let's Unlike believe you. God. Um, with Sister Tanya yes. here, and uh, God has the husband for her, yes. the godly husband, the man of God, yes. and so we're going to be in agreement with uh, Sister Tanya right now. Yes. Father, we thank you right thank now you, Father God. that you have the man of thank God, you, Lord you have this godly man that you uh, yes, already God. are bringing her way, yes, Lord and we Jesus. thank you that it's a great marriage, it's yes, a Father wonderful God. marriage, Lord God. Yes, Lord, Lord, and we pray in the name of Jesus that, Father, everything is taken care of, every need is met, and, Father, we know that you're well able to do it. Yes. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Amen. God bless you, Sister Tanya. Continue to believe God, and we believe for a quick manifestation. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you, Sister. God bless you. Bye-bye. Again. We're talking about marriages. We're talking using John chapter 2, verse 2, how Jesus and his disciples were invited to the marriage. And we know that there's so much more that happened here. But the key that we want to focus on today is that Jesus was invited. Now, we're speaking to some people out there. Are you inviting Jesus into the midst of your marriage, mm. into the midst of the situation that yes. you're going through, in the midst of the problems? Because it's like uh, DeLillian was saying earlier, that sometimes we can get so hard-hearted or so prideful that all we want is out. Right. We're, we're not even looking to forgive. We're not looking for healing. We, we just, all we want is just out of the marriage at this point. 
And I'm telling you, that's not God's best. And that's not really what God wants. Look, people are going to mess up. And we know this. And just like we've all messed up and God has forgiven us of all the things that we've done. Well, God is the example of who we're supposed to be. Exactly. And we are to forgive as well. So, with that, uh, we're talking about outside influences. Um, and Delilian spoke about ungodly counsel. Yes. And, and we know that there's so many more. Uh, Delilian, can you give us something else uh, uh, that uh, you believe is, will interfere with, um, that will hinder marriages from drawing closer together? I think another uh, big problem that marriages do, they prioritize their marriages late, uh, later on in their to-do list. Um, they actually prefer, prefer their job, their children, um, whatever their special activities over their marriage. Instead of making that uh, relationship, the husband and wife, the primary um, relationship, the primary goal. It's like I used to say all the time, and I still tell people, marriage is like a job. Mm -hmm. You have to apply. You have to show up for work. You have to, uh, for, for the raises and the benefits, you have to put in your time. You have to look at it like, what can I do to increase the marriage and make this more of a valuable relationship? And those outside influences disrupt that job. Mm -hmm. uh, say you, you prefer going fishing. I have a son that loves fishing. Uh, over spending time with your spouse, mm -hmm. or you want to go shopping, or you get in debt uh, because that outside influence of spending money, those things hinder a marriage when you make the focus of the relationship priority, and then family. Then those outside influences can't come in, and if they come in, again, we always have the adversary, the advocate, Jesus Christ, if we pray and seek him on our behalf to influence on a godly way, in a godly way. Amen. Amen. Um, you know, um, we've know been, we're talking about uh, marriages, and, and I announced earlier that we just celebrated 21 years of being married. And, uh, and that's a big, big um, achievement, especially in, in, on my side of the family. Um, because there's not too many marriages on my side of the family that have uh, sustained that long and been married that long. Uh, and one of the things that I found out is that, and, and Delillian mentioned it earlier, that you know one of us wants to stay mad. Well, a lot of times that's me. I'm like, you know what? I just want to be mad. And, and that's not the, the right way to handle things, <laughs> but th the truth is the truth. And um, you know, but you have to come to the point to say that, hey, you know what, that's wrong. It shouldn't be that way. You know, let let's let's move on. You know, you got to apologize. You got to forgive, and you got to move on. And that that's how uh, the marriage will be successful, and how God will begin to move inside the marriage. You have to forgive. If you can't forgive, the Bible's clear and says. In order for God to forgive us, we have to forgive. Exactly. <clears throat> we got so many people right now that are living uh, outside of God's will is because they've never gotten to the point to forgive and, and, and to be able to say, you know what, uh, yes, you did mess up and we're going to work our way through this thing. Marriage is something like, <clears throat> excuse me, that Delillian said, it takes work. Every day it takes work. And so we want to encourage you today. We want to be able to impart something into you that's going to help you go through what you're going through right now. Again, uh, our prayer uh, number is on the screen. Call our prayer partner so we can believe God with you. If you want to get transferred over here, we can pray for you directly right here on the broadcast. We're talking about inviting Jesus into our marriage. Glory to God. And you know, a lot of couples invite the Lord in on that marriage day but then after that they go off they get married they start living and they forget that the center of the marriage should revolve around Christ and so those other outside influences come in which strip away now I'm gonna tell 
Now, we're, we're not sitting here 21 years later and it's been perfect. No. We've had to ride out some things. We had to dig up the fruit of the Spirit to, to have patience and have love for each other. Because with Christ as the center of the, of the main influence that a godly marriage should have, you have to do the things and walk in the fruit of the Spirit. You have to walk in the things that God has called you to do. Now... I work a late night shift and I'm with a lot of young people and when I say I've been married 21 years, they act as though that's, I've been as old as Noah <laughs> or something or, you know, just so many years but when I was younger, 50 years, 30 years, that was a lot. So now we live in a time where people just walk away from marriages left and right and that shouldn't be. People will commit to a tattoo past, I mean, brother, right? Mm -hmm. They will commit to a <clears throat> tattoo for the rest of their lives, but they will not commit to a relationship. And I just, uh, somebody asked me the other night, am I getting, would I get your name tattooed on me? I was like, no, he's on my heart. I got him. He's all right. So I would like to encourage you to commit to the relationship. Get away from the outside influence. Look to God for the answer. Again, invite him into your marriage. Mm -hmm. Invite him into your finances, which is a stressful part of marriage. Invite him into with your children, which can be stressful. Invite the Lord Jesus Christ into your marriage, and you will see little by little things start working out. If you walk in the fruit of the Spirit, things start working out a lot better. A Amen. lot better. Amen. Uh, Delilah, we got another call here. Glory to God. And let's take this next call and believe God. Hello, caller. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you doing? We're doing great. Praise God. What's your name? Christy. 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 What can we believe God with you uh, uh, for today? Yeah, well, I had a question about the, um, the marriage that you guys are talking about. Well, how do you forgive somebody... Um, that well, they. I, I understand you make a mistake once, but then if they do it again, how do you move on and forgive when you marry? Uh, I like to say uh, <clears throat> they have to decide. Do you want to continue walking in this this sin or walking in this? Uh, infraction in the marriage do you want to continue that or do you want our marriage to uh, heal because you can't keep making the same mistake and asking for forgiveness you you've got to decide are you going to commit and then once they say that then you still I, I mean sometimes it's like a re, somebody recovery they practice the behavior so long that it takes them a while to walk out of it to walk away from it so I'm, I'm telling you it's not too hard for God mm -hmm. it's not too hard for God and I must say this Christy um, that is right correct Christy yes okay there are things that even you and I still do that is against the Lord. But when we ask for forgiveness, he will always forgive us. Amen. Amen. And I have one more question. Okay. So, and, um, what in my situation, there's the stepkids involved. I have three and he has two. So how do I, um, well, the issue is I'm having drama with the, the other side because she's telling her kids not to like me and things like that. How do I move on? Like it's it's very frustrating when there's love, when you want to love your stepkids and then you're stopped or you're you you have limitations. So how how do how do you move on? How do you fix that? I mean, I pray every day, I fast, but it's like not there's no breakthrough. So I don't I don't understand. <laughs> Well, uh, Christy, let me ask you this. Have you and your husband sat down and discussed uh, this situation? Yes. Okay. And uh, is he in agreement with you? Uh, because I know when you're talking about blended families, uh, it, it can get real complicated um, because, like you said, the other parent has a lot that's what we're talking about outside influences right that's trying to destroy your marriage and sometimes 
It, it, now, do the stepchildren, do all the stepchildren live with you all? No, they won't. They don't listen to me. So, like, I mean, when they come in, just if I tell them something, they don't because she tells them not to, not to follow what I say. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is my home, so they have to follow rules. Exactly. I mean, my my children respect my husband. They're not their biological father, and we don't have a problem with them. It's just the other side. So, like, I don't want to say not for them to come because I feel like they'll destroy my marriage. But then again, that's his kids. Right. I have, you know, I accept him, but I have to accept his kids. So I don't mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things is, is that, and, and, and this is just right off the bat, one of the things is the husband needs to sit the kids down and say, hey, when you're here, if she says this is what you need to do, then that's what you need to do. Because you all need to be a team and you all need to be in agreement. Um, that's the thing. And, and a lot of times, even with, without having a bl blended family, yes. your, even your natural children will try to influence uh, either the mother or the father, or they'll come to one over the other, right. trying to get one to say yes, while the other one's saying no, and they pit one uh, against each other. Uh, so really, the, the, how that's resolved is by you and your husband coming together and standing strong and saying, no, this is the way it's gonna be in our house. And right. this is the way we, right. these are our rules, and this is the way we're going to live. And when you come here, this is the way that it's going to be. Right. And, and so he has to set that, that standard. He has to set that rule. If not, then it's going to be chaos, and, it, and it's going to be confusion, right. and you're going to be mad, and he's going to be mad because you're mad. And you the know, kids are going to be stressed And out. this kid's going to be stressed. And, you know, that, that whole saying, you know, a happy wife, happy life, <laughs> you know, uh, there's some truth to that. <clears throat> so um, we want to believe God with you right now that God is going to begin to move in the midst of that whole situation. Correct. And he is going to help you in, in your family in that whole situation. And how long have you been married? It's been a year, a year and a half. Okay, uh, one of the main things I would say, just like Ray just said, come up with guidelines and say this is what we're going to do. Let the children know you love them and you want them apart and you want to enjoy life with them because they're with your husband. You know, they're your husband's children, but keep the guidelines and make the guidelines firm. And if that changes how often you see them, then that'll be on them. But you keep loving them and you keep trying to pour into their life. They will see after a while that you're not an enemy, but you're there and you actually love them and care about them, okay? It's a big uh, trans uh, it's a big change for everyone. So I would say, be patient. Keep loving. Word of God said, love never fails. So you keep yeah. loving. Come up with your guidelines and stay the course with the guidelines. And we're going to believe God. Amen. Amen. Would you pray? Please? Amen. Father God, thank I you thank so you. much. Let me you guys just pray for me. <laughs> okay, let me pray. Father God, I thank you right now for Chrissy. I thank you, Father God, that she is representing a whole lot of families, Father God, that are blended together. Father God, I, I speak. <coughs> peace, love, and joy into this marriage. I pray, Father God, that people would line up and do what they need to do, Father God, that your will would be done, that this couple would be one and not divided by any children, any situation. Father God, bind them together closer and closer and give them clear direction as they seek you for their children, uh, stepchildren, all the children, Father God, and bless their marriage and all the marriages that are represented, that she represents in Jesus' name, because they can be whole, they can be healthy in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Chrissy. God bless you. Thanks a lot. God bless. We're going to take another call right here. God bless you and welcome to Word Alive. May I get your first name, please? Guillermo. Okay, what can we pray for you about today, brother? Uh, are you the, uh, well, you know, I was wondering if you could um, <clears throat> recommend something where there's a lot of domestic violence. Where there's a lot of what? You, what domestic violence. What would you recommend that marriage to do? Should the woman take it 
Can no. you pray for the husband? I'm sorry. <laughs> or should... <laughs> no, no, really, in a situation... I know, that, I, I know the prayer works. I'm a minister, okay? Right, right. right. With that question. Yeah, uh, really, in a, situation, and, uh, in a situation like that, there really needs to be some counseling, uh, some professional counseling involved um, where they can actually start working in this situation. Uh, the wife should not take it, uh, not whatsoever, um, because you, we just don't know in this situation to what extreme is it going to go to, okay? I mean, and right now, it might be just verbal or it might be emotional, but it can get... Uh, a lot worse than that and we don't want anybody to be in that situation um, you know to end up with broken legs broken arms uh, um, uh, even death you know well uh, <clears throat> now I'm, I'm I'm clear a, this up. I, I do a lot of I do a lot of ministry in mm. Hispanic churches okay and uh, and we've come across with that situations with those situations oh yeah uh, oh see with me and my wife been married for 42 years now Glory to God. we travel to different states mm -hmm. here and uh and we preach in hispanic churches and mm -hmm. i noticed that they have they have that macho macho style right oh, yeah yeah they want to change the men want to control the men mm -hmm. uh, you know <laughs> they, right. they miss, miss <clears throat> the, 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 the scripture with you right, know, but uh, I just was wondering if uh, I recommended counseling. I recommended different things. Yeah, but let me let me uh, interject right here. Uh, no, no abuse is accepted. Verbal, uh, mental, emotional. There is no room for that in a marriage, not in a godly marriage. So, Pastor Ray and I, we never. Uh, encourage divorce, but if there's a time, a time needed to separate, you need to separate because people need to get some issues together. Uh, why they have to be so verbal and so uh, physical with another person. They have issues that they need resolved before the marriage can be whole and healthy. No, we do not recommend anyone take any type of abuse, but know that you get professional counseling and that God can, again, God can work, but we need to get to the root of the problem of why the aggression, aggression and <coughs> physical. But uh, well, we're going to pray. Me and my wife never recommends uh, divorce. Never, Pre never, no. God can heal, but we have to find out what the source is. And we're going to have to pray because our time is running out, okay? Okay. We're going to pray and believe God. You keep doing what you're doing and keep making those referrals. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank Father, you. I bless thank my you, brother. God. I thank you for wisdom thank today. You, Jesus. I thank you Where's for... Where's the church at? Where's the church at? Um, the, this church is uh, Evangel, Evangel World Prayer Center, 5400 Miners Lane. Is this in Louisville or? Yes, it, yes, sir. In, in Louisville. Louisville. Uh huh. In Louisville. Okay. Yeah. Evangel World yes. Prayer Center. Call the number on the screen and they'll give you uh, uh, directions on how to get here. I just hold on and we'll put you on hold. Can you put them on? I don't know. Okay. All and right. uh, we'll give you that information. We're going to pray right now. <clears throat> Lord, bless my brother today. Thank Father, you. we thank you for wise counsel. Touch him. Lord, may he minister. To these people, Father God, in these domestic uh, marriages, Lord, and bring healing in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, brother. Mm -hmm. Bless you, too. Now, I know that was a quick prayer, but God can answer. And so I would encourage you to continue to pray and seek counsel. If that's the situation, get out of the marriage. Not out of the marriage, but out of the, the, the uh, line of the abuse right. and uh, God can work. Amen. Yes. And, and let's uh, say this because we want to make sure that people understand what we're saying. We're not encouraging divorce, but sometimes you need to get out of the midst of the situation and, and, and get counsel so that things can, uh, things can be healed and things can work out uh, because we don't want anyone to be in that situation whether, again, whether it's verbal, whether it's emotional, whether it's physical, uh, whatever it might be, 
we never encourage anybody to stay in that situation. There are uh, numerous agencies out there that help uh, in these situations. And then, of course, there's the church as well. And, uh, and those are some of the things that we deal with and some of the things that, that we, we handle as well as far as getting uh, counseling or referring to certain agencies. <clears throat> right now, uh, we have a prayer request. I uh, want to thank you all for calling in. Yes. And we have uh, several here uh, uh, with uh, different sicknesses, uh, back problems. Finances. Uh, finances, housing problems. Um, uh, needing transportation, need healing, uh, surgery. Someone's going in for surgery. Someone needs a miracle in their bones. Glory to God. We have somebody that wants to volunteer at the Lord's kitchen. Amen. Amen. Uh, addictions. Mm -hmm. uh, fighting this habit. Mm -hmm. Stress. Finances. Mm -hmm. um, Eye problems God. here. Cataracts. Um, graduates, um, uh, children graduating, uh, needing direction. That's a big thing Amen. right now. Hernia surgery, mm -hmm. infection in the ankle, mm -hmm. salvation, might lose a leg, Lord mm -hmm. Jesus. Deliverance from, from addictions, uh, just all kinds of things here um, that we, uh, our prayer partners have been believing God with you and we're going to touch and agree and believe God as well with you. Uh, we want to encourage you uh, to uh, stay tuned to uh, catch Word Alive uh, every day at this time, and we want to believe God with you. Uh, let's pray for these. Go ahead, man. Father, we bless you, we thank you, and we pray, Father, for every prayer request here today. May you meet their needs. May you touch them, Lord God, and may you do great things for them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Again, we want to thank you all for joining in to Word Alive today. And uh, we pray and hope that something was said today that encouraged you and that blessed you and that gave you some type of help. Again, you can catch us here, Facebook, Twitter, uh, um, the Internet, and you can catch us here. And we will see you next time. God bless you. God bless you. Word Alive is a production of Bob Rogers Ministries in Louisville, Kentucky. For more information on the outreach of this ministry or to become a partner, visit bobrogersministries.org. And remember to like us on Facebook and Ustream. Just search TV Word Alive.